Welcome to JCPSC School. Today's lesson is on medieval visual art. Introduction After the fall of the Roman Empire in 479 AD, Europe fell into a long period of constant upheaval as different people fought over control of territory. Christianity came to be the accepted religion, and three distinct styles of religious architecture were developed Byzantine, Romanesque, and Gothic. Byzantine architecture from 330 to 1453 AD Byzantine architecture was actually developed before the collapse of the Roman Empire. When Christianity was allowed to be practiced under the rule of Emperor Constantine, Christian church leaders began to build buildings for their followers to worship in. Early Christian architecture used the Roman Basilica, a public meeting hall, as a model since it had not been used for pagan religious practices. The rectangular plan with side aisles created by a row of colonnades suited the purposes of early churchgoers well. This style of early Christian architecture was used mostly in the West. In the Eastern Roman Empire, a different style of church design was used. Byzantium had become the capital of the Roman Empire under Constantine. Being closer to the Middle East and West Asia, Byzantine architecture reflects strong Persian influence besides existing Greek and Roman styles. Hagia Sophia is a red square-shaped building with a large dome top. The best example of Byzantine church architecture is the Hagia Sophia, built between 532 and 537 AD in Byzantium, Constantine changed the name to Constantinople, but it is now known as Istanbul, Turkey. The Roman Emperor Justinian had two Greek mathematicians design the new Christian church in Constantinople. The floor plan is a square cross with a center dome. The square cross plan, minus the dome, was developed by the Greeks. Romans used a groin vault, a vault created by two intersecting barrel vaults, to solve the problem of creating wider, more open spaces over squared areas. Hagia Sophia was to have the highest, widest dome possible. Using existing Roman construction techniques for vaults, Anthemius of Trolls and Isidorus of Miletus designed a dome that would be 200 feet across and 31 feet higher than the biggest dome existing at that time, which was in the Pantheon in Rome. How did they do it? Like any engineering problem, they used math to figure out how to get the dome wider and higher without collapsing. They solved the problem by using a dome on pendentives. A pendentive is a triangular shape between the dome and the four piers, which supports the weight above. The plan shows building shaped of domes, arches, and vaults, all within large square base. There is a drawing showing pendentive inside Hagia Sophia. Pendentives are where four arches come together and all lean inward to form a circle. That is then covered with a dome. There is a diagram of dome on pendentives. Like a funnel, the weight of the dome goes down the pendentives into the four 70 feet high piers to the ground. The dome on pendentives construction technique allowed for the design of wider, higher dome and the ability to put windows in the walls between the four piers. The exterior shape could be modified from the square to other geometric shapes such as a hexagon or octagon. The Hagia Sophia uses several features typical of Byzantine design, a squared cross floor plan with a center dome, a dome on pendentives structural support system, an exterior plane, little or no decoration, and an interior lavishly decorated with mosaics, small pieces of colored glass or stone. Walls are made of rows of arches and vaults, with a giant dome on top. Inside the dome, most surfaces are covered in gold. A ring of windows is around the base of the dome. There are photos of the interior of Hagia Sophia. The interior of the Hagia Sophia was designed to arouse emotion. The wide, high dome created a heavenly, spiritual feeling. The 40 arched windows at the base of the dome and the numerous windows in the walls allowed light to pour in. The light reflected off the brightly colored mosaics inside the dome and on the pendentives to create a dreamlike atmosphere. The mosaics are like large paintings made from pieces of glass and stone instead of paint. They are images of stories from the Bible, and some include the figure of Emperor Justinian. The mosaics had to be large in the Hagia Sophia in order to be seen and read. The other surfaces on the interior are covered or made of multicolored marble. Romanesque architecture from 1030 to 1200 AD with the development of the feudal system in the 9th century and the growing influence of the church, a common person's life was spent working for the lord of the manor and the lord of the church. The church provided comfort from the hardships of daily life, 
and it provided the means for salvation after death. One-tenth of every man's income was required to be given to the church. The growing dedication to God and church began the practice of pilgrimages to holy sites. Many churches housed relics that drew Christians far from their homes. Relics are the remains or belongings of saints, or even objects that were directly related to Jesus Christ or the Virgin Mary. The floor plan of a Romanesque church is a rectangular cross based on the Roman basilica. The pillars and arches form a large, rectangular hall. It is very boxy looking except for half domes on each end. Kind of like a hot dog in a bun. Here are the interior view and in the floor plan of a Roman basilica. The center of the short arm of the cross is called the crossing. The area at each end of the cross's shorter arm is called the transept. The center of the long arm of the cross leading to the crossing is called the nave. On either side of the nave are walkways called side aisles. To the basilica plan, Romanesque architects, who were typically monks, added an ambulatory, a walkway, for pilgrims to use around the apse, rounded end at the head of the cross plan, and the radiating chapels which stick out from the rectangular cross. The floor plan makes a cross shape. This other floor plan is also cross shaped. Here is a basic floor plan with labels and the floor plan of St. Cernan. Significantly, Romanesque churches had roofs made of stone instead of wood, and the buildings were taller. The problem created by the weight of the stone and the additional height was solved by using the Roman barrel vault, a series of arches back to back, creating a tunnel effect, or groin vault, two intersecting barrel vaults. Massive pillars, acting as column and buttress in one, and thick walls support the weight above as pressure travels down from the heavy roof. Few windows could be put in the walls because of the support needed, so interiors look dark. Exteriors are plain, with decoration limited to the arched openings. Relief sculptures were often carved into the tympanum, the half-circle area above the doorway of the church. Towers were often built either over the crossing, at each side of the front of the church, or even separated from the main building. Arches make walls, while rooms form a cross shape. The head of the cross is rounded. The center of cross has a single tower. Here is a drawing of St. Cernan. Arches are very tall, which gives walls extra height. Here is the interior view of side aisles. Tall, vertical lines make the walls high. Here is a Romanesque nave. The term, Romanesque, was used to describe this style of architecture because of the rounded arches over doors and windows, and the use of the barrel vault. The rounded arch is the one characteristic commonly used to distinguish Romanesque from Gothic architecture. Determining the difference between the two can be confusing as Romanesque churches were modified and added to once the Gothic style became popular. Many Romanesque churches have some Gothic features. What to look for in a Romanesque church, rounded arches over doors and windows, a must, barrel vault over nave, rectangular cross floor plan, stone roof, plain exterior, massive, heavy look. Gothic architecture from 1140 to 1500 AD. Gothic architecture was meant to be a visual expression of a religious idea. Church leaders wanted to emphasize the idea of heaven and seeking salvation from God above. The taller, less heavy-looking churches symbolized the idea of reaching for a spiritual goal. There was also the need to allow more light into churches to symbolize the light of God. The Gothic style of architecture was developed to solve the problems of building taller churches without thicker walls and buttresses, and of adding more windows for better light. Pointed arches, ribbed vaults, and flying buttresses were developed as solutions to these problems. Pointed arches allowed the weight from above to be directed straight down, decreasing the outward pressure. Ceilings were constructed using ribbed vaults, which used the pointed arch instead of the rounded arch, to make ceilings higher and lighter than with the groin vault. Round arches are extended to form points for extra height, strength. Here is a rib vault diagram. Arched ceiling shows that the top of the arches forms a point, not a perfect circle. Here is a photo of rib vaults. This image shows a door arch which is pointed at the top. Here is a photo of Notre Dame with pointed arches, as well as tympanum and door jam statues. Pointed arches and diagonal arches between other arches for extra support. Here is a photo of the interior with rib vaults in the nave of Notre Dame, Paris. Arches extend beyond wall boundary to prop up the walls. Here is a diagram of arches in nave of Notre Dame, Paris. With pointed arches in the rib vault, 
builders could construct even taller churches, which we call cathedrals, however, there is still some outward pressure that must be supported. Arches prop up the walls. It resembles spider webs sticking to walls, but made of stone. Here is a photo of flying buttresses. It shows fancy frills added to the supporting arches for decoration. Here is a diagram of flying buttresses, exterior of Notre Dame, Paris. Flying buttresses were designed to support the walls at the top. They are not attached to the whole wall like buttresses in the past. Flying buttresses act like a human hand, holding the wall in place, instead of a whole arm propped against the wall. Because they were placed at the top of walls, flying buttresses allowed more open space for windows in the walls of the side aisles. By using pointed arch windows instead of rounded arch windows, the windows could be made taller than before. A photo of a stained glass window shows vivid colors of blue and red, showing two riders on horses. Brilliant blues, golds, reds, and greens of four people praying on their knees wearing long robes. Photos of stained glass at Notre Dame, Paris. With the ability to have more and taller windows, Gothic builders used lots of stained glass. The stained glass provided the opportunity to add color to the building and to tell stories from the Bible. Rounded stained windows divided into sections like flower petals are called rose or rosette windows. This photo of a rose window shows it to be a round window with hundreds of panes of glass forming a pattern that radiates outward from a center circle. Here is a rosette window, exterior view, Notre Dame, Paris. This is the same as above, but from inside, making the colors in the glass show. Each little section tells a little story. This is a rosette window. Interior view, Notre Dame, Paris. Gothic cathedrals also have more leaf sculpture, often protruding so much they appear to be freestanding. Early Gothic sculptures tended to be elongated and abstract, but the concern for making things look naturalistic eventually led to more lifelike sculptures. These later sculptures also tended to show much more emotion than before. This photo shows statues built into the wall which looks like tall fancy chess pieces. This is a photo of early Gothic, 12th century, relief sculptures. This photo shows statues all in a row, standing on pillars, to form a wall. Here is a photo of 13th century Gothic relief sculptures. Strong superstitious beliefs are behind the sculptures of gargoyles. Gargoyles were meant to scare evil spirits away and remind people that evil was all around them. Builders also had them designed to function as water spouts to carry water away from the building. This ornament sticks out from the corner of a building, looking like a skinny dragon. The open mouth is where water would pour. Photo of gargoyle. What to look for in a Gotha cathedral. Comma pointed arch. Comma flying buttresses. Comma rectangular cross plan. Comma rib vaults. Comma stained glass windows. Comma lots of sculpture, decorations. Comma verticality, soaring to the heavens. Comma thin, delicate feeling. For more information on Romanesque and Gothic architecture, go to http www.gloriacapelli.it slash campus luca slash media slash architecture dot p d